what's up everybody, this is Lee Baris, and in this video I'm going to attempt to show you how to record great quality gameplay videos using MSI Afterburner. For those of you who don't know, MSI Afterburner is a graphics card performance tool that also lets you record videos. I'll post the link to this website in the description of the video. Currently the latest full release version is version 2.1.0 from February of last year, but this does not have the recording functionality. Do you want to go to this Discuss Afterburner and Guru 3D forums right there? And then you'll want to look for the latest beta version, which in this case is right here. MSI Afterburner 2.2.0 Beta 15, I think Beta 14, yeah, Beta 14 is down here. We'll go ahead and go with Beta 15. So you'll click this link here. This is pretty simple stuff. I figured I might as well include it in the video though, just in case. Want to download? Agree. Save it somewhere. All right, so that's done downloading. So we'll go to the desktop and extract this real quick. The one thing MSI Afterburner cannot currently do, as far as I know, is let you do live commentary while you're recording the video. There is a workaround that works okay, but. Uh, I use Audacity running at the same time as I record and then sync it up in my video editing program as a better alternative. It gives me better quality audio and it lets me edit out the stupid stuff I do. <laughs> well, stupider than normal. But. And of course, you'll just want to go ahead and install this. It may ask you to restart, I'm not sure. Since I already have this installed and I'm currently recording, I'm not going to go ahead and do that, but just showing that to you real quick. And once you have that installed, you'll get two icons in your taskbar. This one, the airplane with a little purple FPS counter on it, and then just the plain old airplane. You'll want to click on the plain old airplane, go to settings, and here you can mess with everything. I set mine to start with Windows and start minimized. You may want to do that. And you can set it to automatically check for beta versions, which I should probably do, but uh, it's not a big deal. You can control fans of different of your GPU. Under monitoring, you don't really need to mess with anything here. On the on-screen display tab, you'll probably want to uncheck this show on-screen display on captured screenshots and videos. That way, you'll still see the overlay and the FPS counter while you're recording, but it won't actually show up in your videos when you're watching them later, or putting them up on YouTube or whatever. So we have the screen capture tab, but we're not interested in that. We'll go ahead and go to the video capture tab. Here you can choose your shortcut to record video. I have mine set to F10. Here you can set the compression type, which uncompressed is the best quality obviously, but it uses an extremely large amount of hard disk space and most people probably don't want to do that. You can use the RTV one or you can use the MJPG compression, which I use. I don't think it really matters. Here you can set your quality. It's on a slider. I find that most things at 99% saves a decent amount of disk space without really having a noticeable uh, reduction in quality, same to about 95%, so, but I figure I might as well leave it here since I can handle it. Here is an interesting feature they recently added, where you can choose the frame size that MSI Afterburner actually records at. So even if you're playing at, say, 800 by 600 you can have MSI Afterburner automatically upscale or downscale the video to a custom, or to one of these frame sizes. For YouTube, you'll want 16 to 9 720p HD or 16 to 9 1080p HD. As long as you render the video in the same aspect ratio, it'll give you 720p or 1080p on YouTube with no black bars. Keep in mind that if you're playing a game at say 1024 by 768 or some low resolution and you set MSI Afterburner to 16 to 9 720p, it will upscale that, meaning it'll stretch it. So you want to play in that in the same aspect ratio, but the same or higher resolution. Like say you want 720p YouTube video, which is 1280 by 720. You'll want to play at that resolution or at something higher, but with the same aspect ratio. So in my case, I play at 1600 by 900 since that's my monitor's native resolution, but I record at 16 to 9 720p because that's YouTube 720p. If I had a 1920 by 1080 or higher resolution monitor, I could have it scale down to 1080p, which is YouTube 1080p HD, obviously. In here, you can set your frame rate. I like to have mine at 60 because that allows me room for some nice slow mo when I'm editing, but it does take up a lot more hard drive space than if I was using 30 FPS. 
and the same with quality and compression, those all affect the file size. The better the quality, the higher the FPS, the higher the file size, it's just logical. So here you choose where you want your video saved to that you record. I have it actually saved to a second terabyte hard drive so that I have plenty of room and I can keep it all organized. Normally you'll just want to leave this stuff alone, this compatibility and optimization. And here, to record game audio, make sure you have enable audio capture and downmix multi-channel audio to stereo checked. So that's the overview of this. Now we'll want to go to the other icon here in the taskbar. And this allows you to control the size of the FPS counter while you're in game. You can have it show a shadow. I don't know if you can see that back there. Put a black around that. You can adjust the coordinate space, like where on the monitor you want it to show up. Uh, I think you can change the color of that. Yeah. Show own statistics. I like to leave checked because it tells you how long you've been recording and the, fi the current file size of your video, which is very nice to keep track of while you're recording. And of course you'll probably want this to start with Windows and you'll want to show the on-screen display. I believe this is default actually. If a certain game is having issues with MSI Afterburner, I know some games with Punk Buster might, just like they have issues with Fraps or other screen recorders, you can create a profile for that and increase or decrease the application detection level and you can turn on Stealth Mode. With Stealth Mode on, it's much less likely to get accidentally detected by uh, punk busters, some programs, some anti-cheats like that. In my experience, I have not gotten detected or had any issues with running MSI Afterburner in any game except Bad Company 2 and it was a pretty simple fix. I think I just had to change this to low or something like that. Alright, so that's the actual MSI Afterburner program. I'll post the link in the description to the next two videos that show how to render your footage in Windows Live Movie Maker or Sony Vegas for the best possible quality for YouTube.